Good day everyone, this is a presentation by Kim Daliguit, John Vanson Milthoris, and Judd Osboringhelm. Today we'll be talking about ketognauts, echinoderms, and hemicardates. First, we'll be talking about ketognauts, which was first recorded in 1775, and they're elevated to their own phylum by Rudolf Levicart in 1854. Ketognauts, meaning bristle jaws, kingdom animalia, subkingdom hematozoa. Ketognauts, a phylum of predatory marine worms that are a major component of plankton worldwide, commonly known as arrowworms. They are called arrowworms because of their shape like an arrow, and they range us from the size as 2 to 120 millimeters. The average size of an adult is 105 millimeters. For anatomy, their body is divided into three distinct parts, namely the head that we can find the hook and the mouth, the trunk where we can find the intestine and the ovary, and in the tail segment where we can find the anus and the testes. Ketognauts are transparent or translucent dark shaped animals covered by a cuticle. We can find 4 and 14 hooked spines that are used for immobilization, <coughs> which is used for hunting and self defense. Ketognauts are hermaphrodites meaning they possess both male and female sex organs. For the male, we have the testes, which is located in the tail, that produces sperm cells, and for the female, we can find the ovaries that are located behind the mid part of the body, which produces egg cells. For reproduction, they are commonly using cross-fertilization, but sometimes they self-fertilize. So they can change their altitude in the water to avoid predation and to find food and they have bioluminescent bodies which means they have the ability to produce light and they are practically everywhere to find and their lifespan is 2 years in cold water and 6 years in tropical water. And they have no circulatory nor respiratory system and they absorb oxygen to breathe. So, heated knots are carnivores that primarily feeds on capopods and amphipods, but in last resort, they eat their own kind. And they are prey on larger organisms like fishes and whales. Their impact to humans. Their positive impact to humans is that they're used as sprays for fishes in fishing, and their negative impact is that they release toxic parasites that may pass on the fishes that human eats. And that's all for ketognauts. So the next phylum would be the echinoderms. So the scientific name for echinoderms are echinodermata. Um, which comes from the Greek word, which means spiny skin. So the characteristics that mostly defines echinoderms is that they have radial symmetry, which means they have five or multiples of five arms. Um, have shells made mainly of calcium carbonate, which is covered by the skin. And they are exclusively marine animals. They are also triploblastic, which means that they have a body derived from the three embryonic cell layers, which are ectoderms, mesoderm, and the endoderm, as in all multicellular animals, except for sponges and cellenterates. They also have a true coelom, um, which is a body cavity formed during embryo development from the three germinal layers, as mentioned before. Um, the presence or absence of the coelom is one of the criteria for classifying animals. Their body is also uniquely shaped, um, which varies from being star-like to elongated or spherical. The surface of the body is also covered with calcareous spicules, which are elements embedded in the dermis of the body wall of echinoderms, and they form part of the endoskeleton 
and provide rigidity and protection. They also have a body cavity which has a water vascular system which is unique to echinoderms. Um, they also have tube feet for locomotion or movement. Their brain is also absent but there is a nervous system present. Respiration occurs through tube feet and gills and their fertilization is external and lost parts can be regenerated like the starfish. So echinodermata may look morphologically different at a glance but they all share the same characteristic features. Um, these animals have some unique shapes and unique colors that are and they are also important ecologically and geologically as they provide valuable clues about the geological environment. And for the five main classes of the phylum Echinodermata are the asteroids, the crinoids, holothurians, echinoids, and the ophiroids. So for the asteroidea, which are commonly called as sea stars or starfishes, are grouped into seven orders, which is Brisingida, Sicuipilatida, Notimiotida, Paxilocida, Spinulocida, Valvatida, and Velatida. Um, they feed by grasping the prey, then averting their stomach and secreting primary enzymes of the prey. Next is the Ophiroidea, um, which has two main classes, which is the Ophiridea, the brittle stars, and the Uralida, which are basket stars. They are somewhat similar to the starfishes, but their five arms that are joined to the central body disc um, is sharply marked off from the arms. So it would look more um, um, skinny in compared to starfishes. So the echinoidea, which is called the sea urchins, are pentaradically, radially symmetrical have a water vascular system like all echinoderms. They have an internal skeleton made of calcitic ossicles or plates. Um, they are commonly grouped as irregular or irregular um, with the greatest difference pertaining to the oral structure and shape of the organism. They also have a rigid, usually spherical body bearing movable spines, which allows them to defend themselves and also provide locomotion in the ocean. So for the Holothuridea, which are sea cucumbers, they are found in nearly every marine environment, but they are mostly diverse on tropical shallow water coral reefs. So um, they have soft and cylindrical body, more or less lengthened, and rounded off and occasionally fatty in the extremities, and generally without solid appendages. They have an endoskeleton just below the skin, classified structures that are usually reduced to isolated microscopic ossicles. They also have no true brain, but there is a nervous system presence that surrounds their oral cavity and sends nerves to the test tentacles and the pharynx, which allows them to move. So, um, sea cucumbers also extract oxygen from water in a pair of respiratory trees, which is called the cloaca, just inside the anus, so that they breathe by drawing water in and then expelling it. So for the last is the crinoidea. So um, the basic body form of a crinoid is a stem and has a crown consisting of a cup-like central body known as the feca and a set of five rays or arms usually branched and feathery. So crinoidea is also commonly called as the sea lilies and they are passive suspension feeders filtering planktons and small particles of detritus from the sea water flowing past them with their feather-like arms, which is how they capture their food or prey. So, crinoids cannot be, they are not capable of clonal reproduction. So, but their main, mean, their, their main means of um, reproducing is by regenerating their lost body parts, um, sometimes torn off by predata predators, predators are damaged by adverse environmental conditions and therefore they can regrow. So crinoids move to new locations by crawling using the Siri as legs as seen from the um, picture shown. The next phylum will be hematuridates.
This is a pylum that contains marine deuterostom animals. They are sometimes considered as a sister group of pylum Echinodermata. Pylum hemichordata is a small pylum with only 85 known species, with animals having a worm-like appearance. Some species may be solitary or some occur in colonies. In fact, hemi means half in Greek while corda means cord in Latin. These animals are also called as acorn worms. They were initially grouped under pylum cordata, but research has proven that none of these organisms does not have post anal tail or even the notochord, which is a distinguishing feature of chordates. Hence, these animals have been given a separate pylum called hemichordata. They are typically found in oceans living on the seafloor. They vary greatly in size, ranging from a few millimeters to almost one and a half meters. Balanoglossus gigas, a hemichordate species, can be of 1.5 meters in length. These species feed on small organic particles. They can be either filter feeders or substrate eaters. Most of the organisms belong to this pylum have a modified proboscis, due to which they have got the name acorn worms. These animals show a few chordate characteristics but are not completely chordate. Hemichordates are bilaterally symmetrical and their bodies are divided into three sections, protosomes and proboscis. This protosome is followed by a collar. Behind this is a trunk which contains the digestive and reproductive organs. Also, they have open circulatory system and complete digestive tract. Hemichordata consists of two classes, the Enteropneusta and Therobranchia. Class Enteropneusta includes most of the pylum and are commonly referred to as acorn worms. So, their body is mucus covered and they possess a prominent proboscis, a collar, and a long slimy trunk up to 2 meters in length. So the proboscis is the most active part of the animal and the rest of the body is sluggish. Their body is divided into three parts, proboscis, collar, and trunk. Collar like a ring is present posterior to the proboscis. A trunk is the third vision of the body as I said which contains the digestive and reproductive organs. The mouth can be situated ventrally involving proboscis along with the collar, a varying quantity of Pharyngeal slits is the current later to about the back. Their circulatory system comprises one dorsal and one ventral contractile vessel. Blood motions anteriorly from dorsal vessel. Anyhow, it moves posteriorly in the ventral vessel. Branches from such vessels go to receptive sinuses. Each blood flowing anteriorly enters into a string blood clot referred to as glomerulus. The glomerulus is already present at the base of the proboscis. The nervous system of class Enteropneusta is ectodermal in starting point. It is located at the bottom of their ciliated skin care. It is made of both dorsal and ventral nerve tract plus also neural plexus. In certain species, even the more dorsal nerve bracking is tubular. It comprises enormous neural fibers. These fibers immediately transmit impulses. There are no influential ganglia. Sensory receptors are unspecialized. Entropnista really are dioecious. Two rows of gonads lie from the torso in the upper area of the back part. Every single and every gonad opens individually into your surface. The picture shown here is Yuda purpurata, a species of acorn worm discovered 2.5 km below the surface of the Atlantic Ocean and the sole species of the genus Yuda. Class Peterbranchia lives in colonies and circuit tubes. There are about 10 species in this class and they have similar development to acorn worms or class Enteropneusta with their bodies divided into proboscis, collar, and trunk. However, the adult's external appearance is very different from acorn worms. The collar expands dorsally into tentacled arms which possess cilia that direct food into ciliated grooves which carry it to the mouth. The alimentary canal is U-shaped with the anus outside the fringe of tentacles. In most species, there is only one pair of pharyngeal slits. Some pitobranchia are dioecious, but most are hermaphroditic. Although fertilization is external, the embryos generally remain sheltered within the tubes. The sexually produced individuals and gave rise to colonies by budding. These tiny marine animals tend to form large plant-like colonies where individuals project like small flowers at the ends of a branching series of tubes. 
The short body is double back on itself so that the anus opens anteriorly over the back of the head. It is generally believed that they are a very primitive group rather than a degenerate hemature date. Modern hemature dates appear to be very similar to the fossil drop lights, which were abundant around the first fossil evidence of the vertebrates. Herobranch are small worm-like filter feathers, living on the ocean floor, often in relatively deep waters. The proboscis is wide and flattened at the tip and in most species contains glands that secrete a tube of organic material in which the therobranch spends its adult life. The animals are mostly colonial with several zoids living together in a cluster of tubes. In some species, the individual zoids within the colony are connected by stolons. So this ends um, chapter 22 about catonuts, echinoderms, and hemichordates.